On the morning of our 6th Tainy run, we left our hotel in Shiraz quite early, as we had planned to walk around the city quite a bit, mainly with the objective of seeing as many of its unique mosques as we could in the short time we had left. Where some of them are also super inconveniently located, as you just saw. The most well-known mosque in all of Shiraz, however, is probably the Nasir al Malk Mosque which is practically famous for its stained glass and how, when the light comes in, in the morning, the colorful patterns will be all over the interior and it's insanely beautiful. And I would definitely wholeheartedly recommend anybody that's ever in the area to visit that mosque, since it is definitely among the most beautiful things I've seen. And even if you have a ton of tourists there, it's really calm and a really chill place to be at. We spent longer than I would want to admit inside just photographing each other, since you can also get really really good photographs thanks to the phenomena. You need to be aware however that you need to do this in the morning, since in the afternoon you wouldn't get the same results, sadly. And of course, after we were finished on the inside, we gave the outside of the mosque some attention. Now there is a complex we visited in between that was really really beautiful as well, but we have no footage from it since you were only allowed to film or to properly photograph when you had a guide with you, and since it was early in the morning nobody was available, so there's that. This last mosque I'm showing you right now still feels extremely surreal to me whenever I look at the footage, since I've never seen anything like this ever before. You see, I'm usually the kind of person that's more interested in the exterior of a building than in the interior, but this time around it's been different. I didn't even want to leave, because it was so stunning to me personally. So this is gonna be the part of the video where I'm not gonna say anything for a couple seconds and just let you enjoy the footage we have. This time around I also have very little hotel footage, since we basically had no time left before we had to leave for our flight. So you know, I always wondered what it's like to be a millionaire and now we have this, so like... <laughs> and then we left Shiraz with a flight that I have actually horrendous footage from. Now let's get you more caught up with our current location. We've spent the morning in Shiraz, which is more around the western part of central Iran. And now we took an airplane to the city of Kerman, which is around the east of central Iran. From there, we planned to go to the ruined village of Gisk. But when we first talked to the only driver we could find, he didn't even exactly know where this place was located, since it's so infrequently visited. There was also some level of time constraint, so we were actually quite in a hurry driving through these amazing desert landscapes that I'm showing you here yet again. But we still were in good hope that we were gonna make it in time. Now we're getting soon to that part, but I just want you to enjoy the mountains. Because even though they look very similar in the first glance, they have very different nuances to them. And I really love these kind of landscapes, so I hope you enjoy watching the footage of us driving around there as much as I do. There was also a particular moment where I had to tell our driver to stop immediately, because I noticed that there were ruins of a caravanserai, which is basically the place where on the Silk Road the people would have stayed at at night. And for a matter of fact, there's actually a lot of them all around Iran, but I didn't know that at the time, so this was very exciting for me to suddenly find out. And I have to admit that the footage of us walking around there is yet again quite terrible, since as I've told you before, we had no time, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. From this point on, we stumbled over a lot of them actually, but we didn't really stop at any and we rather made the plan to go back in a year and visit the ones we couldn't, 
and actually film them properly with better equipment as well. And as we got closer to Gisk, the sunset also grew more dominant, which you can tell by the orange coloring in this clip. We've also tried to film the place just before Gisk, but I have about 7.5 minutes of footage that look exactly like this, so I think the few houses you're seeing right now are gonna be enough of an example. And once Gisk actually became visible in the distance, I became really excited because we finally made it and it was still kind of daylight, so we had enough time to at least see a good chunk of it. With this footage, I'm trying to give you as extensive of a view as possible, as if you would be there yourself exploring the village, since I wouldn't imagine that most people are planning to go there anyway. Generally speaking, places like this are incredibly beautiful to me because there is just a certain atmosphere around abandoned places that I really love. But at the same time it's also architecturally very interesting and the way the village is structured with houses on top of each other is something I haven't seen all that much so far. I don't really know all that much about Gisk, only that it was destroyed about 40 years ago by an earthquake. And I have built a new village, but it is quite a bit away from the old village. We are also planning to go there again in late summer 2020, so we're gonna take more footage, but first of all in a better quality and also with better lighting, since this time around we're not gonna be there only minutes before it gets dark. That is also all I have to say really, so yet again here's gonna be a spot where you just can enjoy the footage without me talking in the background. And on our way back to Kerman, I tried to film the few neighborhoods we came across from a different angle while it got progressively darker. Also, for the third time in this video, this is a part where I have nothing in particular to add, so yet again, I hope you can just enjoy the footage. So while looking for food on the street we found this place called Burger Potato and we got these triangle looking things that are filled with potatoes. So mine is with chop sauce that tastes like curry ketchup and it's not bad but... Does it taste like potato? Obviously yes. So there's also this now. Which looks amazing, but also like a mess to be quite honest. Okay, so I'll try to eat it now. Um, I don't know how. <laughs> okay. really wow, not that much. I think it's fries with cheese and mushrooms and other things. And other things? Mm. Mm. Good. Really good, really good. Mm. So. Interestingly enough, this is apparently a cheeseburger. When we went to the place, I was like, I'll have a cheeseburger. And I thought, of, oh yeah, cheeseburgers are usually small. So I was like, I'd rather have two, just to be sure that I'm not hungry. But apparently, this is a cheeseburger in this country. Like, I'm not sure by which definition this is a cheeseburger. Because this is not a burger, this is a sandwich or something. 
And even though this feels like a weird place to end the video on, we don't have any more material from that day. So if you want to see more of the country, then just stay tuned for the next part.